the Art Zone. This Art Zone is, is a Art video Zone. document of the arts and artists in the Rockford area. This is Nancy Froelich speaking for the Art Zone, calling in from this Deerfield Beach, Zone. Florida. Roland Kula, Chicago landscape artist, opens at the Cortman Gallery. Grown Ups Don't Play With Dolls opens at Gallery 10. The Art of Cooking with Chef Tyler Redman at Bacchus. A Rockford Art Museum Minute and Photography at Rockford College. Hi, I'm Doc Slavkowski and this is the Art Zone. We're coming to you from J.R. Cortman Center for Design downtown in the heart of Rockford's cultural district. In this Art Zone, we'll introduce you to Chicago artist Roland Kula, whose one-man show, Reflections of Solitude, opened at the Cortman Gallery. Dennis Horton pays a visit to Gallery 10 and talks with some of the artists who participated in an, an unusual exhibition entitled Grown Ups Don't Play With Dolls, uh, curated by Matthew Myrie. By the way, the Art Zone would like to welcome Gary and Sandy Pearson to the Rockford Arts community. They're the new owners at Gallery 10. And then cooking takes on an artistic flair when we visit the kitchen at Bacchus, where head chef Tyler Rebman prepares a delicious and eye-appealing plate at this new downtown eatery. Plus, we've got photography at Rockford College and a museum minute at the Rockford Art Museum. So sit back, relax, and enter the art zone. Here's Art Zone reporter Amy Chapaniak at Roland Kula's opening night at the Cortman Gallery upstairs in Cafe Esperanto. Hi, I'm Amy Chapaniak, on location interviewer here for the Art Zone down at the Cafe Esperanto. And we're going to be talking to a few people that are here looking at the art tonight. So enjoy. Oh, I saw an article about the show and I thought I'd step by and see, you know, what the excitement was. What do you think? Well, it looks like there's a lot of excitement about uh, the gentleman's work, and um, I can see why. It uh, has a real interesting perspective, you know, and, uh, and a nice uh, depth to the, the various kinds of paints and varnishes that he, he supplied to the canvas. Are you familiar with his work at all? No, I never heard of him. It's the first time? Yeah. But you're pretty happy with it? You like it? Well, yeah, I, I like I think it's... Uh, I, Excellent work. This is North Avenue Beach, and all these poles, which I found out I didn't know when I first looked at them, are the poles from the, all the volleyball courts. Uh. And I have some friends who live in Chicago who um, they play volleyball yeah, down there. So and I uh, and I just I just love the way the, the not only the shadows but the light, the way he has the light along did the you beach. You talked him about this. Is how did you know this is what that was? He just recognized well, I, it. I asked him. I asked him. Yeah. I actually saw this driving up Lakeshore Drive and his volleyball poles on the beach at night. And then I went back and took a photograph in the daytime and made a sketch of the pole placements, but then remembered the light. And when I made it, I actually arranged all the poles and I did like three versions of drawings to get the pole placement. But when I did the canvas, I marked them all in masking tape and moved them around so that when I did the heavy paint on the background, it wouldn't. I could get smooth poles and str put string across to get my horizon line. So it really, yeah, I mean, it's really kind of working the arrangement and the placement of the cans and all the rest of that. I used the brush to the, uh, and the other one I've used the knife to kind of get the lake effect. But it's really cool because depending upon where you're standing, it's a whole different painting and different stuff shows up because of the brush strokes. So it's just, these are the large, I've only started working large in the last like year and a half. And this is my first solo show. So I have really only started to like show and sell in the last two years. I'm very partial to the work because his compositions are superior. I don't know how many people get into that part of it, 
but they grab you even before you know what you're seeing. They, the visual impact is outstanding. That's what I've heard consistently. Yeah. Not in those words, but pretty much what you just said. And the work is, it's a lot about isolation and loneliness. And there's, there's so much emotion to it that at first you don't see it. You see it as everyday ordinary things. And then you start looking at it and you get this overwhelming emotion to it of, God, I feel, I feel lonely. lonely. You know, I'm out here by myself. And all of it, if you start looking at it, conveys that same idea. I think it's some of the stronger work that I've seen. Here? Yeah, it, on a level of like impact and strikingness, like I like the severity of the color, the contrast. Something just strikes me, and then it's kind of stuck in my head, like a lot of these. This one and the dock painting I saw maybe four years ago, and then three years later, and then I would think about them, I'd go take photographs, I'd go do sketches, and then finally work it up and um, do You're just kind of drawn to it just by experiencing it? Yeah. And if the experience is enough uh, for it to make that much of an impression, over, over time it will work its way out and then become a painting. But there's also a lot of work in terms of refining, even though that may be a vision in my head that I know I saw, for it to get to the canvas, I refine the, the process to, to make it happen. Do grown-ups play with dolls? Dennis Horton finds out at an art opening at Gallery 10. Dolls. Dolls are something I know. I grew up with two sisters. Dolls have no hair, no clothes, and often one eye. Is that how grown-ups see dolls? Maybe. But to find out for sure, visit Gallery 10 for a show that's all about dolls. As a curator, when you contacted these artists, what were you hoping for? Well, Dennis, uh, I these people are all friends of mine, and they're quite diverse. They're they're a little nuts, actually. And uh, what I was looking for was a wide range of of expression here, and. Uh, I was relying on a little bit of crazy from all these people, and, and I got it. I mean, we got it. It's, it's, it's fun. I'm begging you to tell me, what is the inner child? I hate questions like that. It's art, damn it. Um, I have no idea. This isn't the question you're going to ask me, Dennis. It's a setup, isn't it? Stop! <laughs> Why dolls? That's a long story. How much film do we have here? Uh... That that concept uh, that concept originated out of out of kind of a, a cynical moment for me, uh, when right in this space right here, a couple of years ago, they were packing up some really cutesy cutesy dolls that somebody sent in here, and they were very Victorian and very ornate. And I, in a in a cynical moment, I said, "Wouldn't it be fun to do a doll show with a, a series of dolls with not." so much a proper uh, approach but more of a, a little darker side a little more of how do you perceive a doll oh yeah that sounds like an inter interesting idea until I came down to producing it because most of my stuff is well I do a little bit of dimensional work but not really super three-dimensional or, or or even try to assemble anything that is in a, that proportions of a doll and so when it came to actually producing it, I was having all kinds of problems with it. And I had a few other ideas. In fact, what I started with was originally was a Picasso doll. And because uh, I really like Pablo Picasso and nothing was working. And I was trying to put the pieces together and it was just 
uh, falling apart more than <laughs> more than staying together. And uh, so I was almost to the point of frustration. I mean, I was getting really frustrated. And I thought, geez, well, I don't want to cancel out of the show. How am I going to do this? And I thought, what do I know? Uh, I went, well, I know computers. I work on computers. And I like Kachina dolls. And it, then the light bulb kind of went on. And, and that's, that was the, how it started. Matthew called me and asked me to be on the show. And he didn't really give too many guidelines. So I kind of took my own uh, course with it. Um, I just happened to have all these things down in my studio and put them together. I just happened to go that way. Well, it's, it's titled The Inner Child. We all want to know. Well, here's The Inner Child. Or his head, anyway. That you... Stone doll's very frightening, and so I think that these are apropos of what I always thought of as a child that dolls were. We're at Gallery 10, one of Rockford's long-established galleries. However, we're here tonight with its new owner, Sandy Pearson. This is your first show. We want to say, first of all, welcome. And tell us a bit about your desire to become the owner of such a, an establishment. Well, I've been a, a frustrated artist all my life, and I've worked with Charlene Berg, the former owner, for about 12 years buying artwork. And when I heard that the gallery was for sale, it was like a dream come true for me and decided that maybe I should uh, try to reach one of my dreams, make it come true. And so we started negotiating, and very happily, we're able to come to agreement and very thrilled. Well, we'd like to continue to be a force here. Uh, we're gaining new appreciation for the art scene that's downtown Rockford. Uh, that's been a pleasant surprise to find out the support in Rockford for the arts. And so we're hoping to continue in Charlene's tradition and keep the gallery going and mentor new artists in any way that we can. Do we see any changes immediately? Not immediately. I think we just want to continue with her traditions. And um, as things evolve, we'll probably make a few changes, but nothing drastic. Hi, I'm Bill Gregg of New American Theater, and obviously you're not at the theater because you're watching The Art Zone. Cool. Thanks for Now if I could just do mine. We the Art Zone takes you to the Rockford Art Museum with Kathy Christensen for a Museum Minute. I'm Kathy Christensen, Public Relations Director with the Rockford Art Museum, helping to start a segment that Art Zone is beginning where they check in with the Art Museum once a month to see what's going on. I thought we'd start outside with the three new sculptures that are recently on loan to the Rockford Art Museum's Armour Allstrand Sculpture Garden. All three sculptures were very recently installed in the Sculpture Garden, and all three are by different artists, all from Illinois. You might recognize the work of some of the artists. They have been on display at such locations at Navy Pier in Chicago. What's interesting is they, they're real similar, but they all have a great contrast the first is by Virginia Ferrari. The title is Contrasting, and it's an aluminum piece. Then we also have Michael Dunbar's piece, Inland Passage. It's painted steel. And also very familiar, very similar to another popular Rockford sculpture. And the third piece is made of concrete. It's by Mike Bauer, entitled Prairie Till. All three sculptures are on loan for an 18-month period from the artist and were installed earlier in the year by Crane, and that was thanks to Joseph Berenson's Dick Bear and Dick Druick. They helped with that. It was quite a job. And after the 18-month period is this over, is new sculptures will be installed and put on loan, and there they will this be on display for zone. public enjoyment. This is the art zone. Hey, kids. I know you're going to dig this. Don't forget, the art zone is available at the downtown branch of the Rockford Public Library. Shut up! We're in the River East District of downtown, and within the shadow of City Hall stands Bacchus, which is a, a new restaurant downtown, and you put out some very interesting food here. We're talking with the head chef at Bacchus, and this is Tyler Redman, right? How are you today? I'm fine, Tyler. And you're going to make something for us here, uh, and you've got all the ingredients laid out. Why don't you tell us what you're going to make? Okay. And, uh... Today I'm going to make a Chilean sea bass. Uh, it's dusted with fresh thyme served over fried shoestring potatoes, sautéed leeks, and uh, uh, cream fish uh, sauce. And I, I noticed you have everything ready here. Uh, yes. Tell us what all this is, but is this a good idea, like for the person who is cooking at home, to get everything out? Because I know when I cook, I tend to run around the That's kitchen. That's called mise en place. Uh, it's, it's absolutely a necessity. It keeps you organized, keeps you from 
oh, stopping in the middle of something to go get something else. Everything's laid out, so everything's right, right within your reach. I can start out by this. This is this is the Chilean sea bass. It's a it's a very meaty white fish. This is just all-purpose flour. I'm going to dust the fish with that. This is uh, simply white pepper, uh, kosher salt. This is uh, fresh thyme. These are the julienne of leeks. I have some bay leaves. I have uh, some salmon to flavor the sauce. You can actually use shrimp shells or fish bones, anything like that. Uh, I've got a little sugar, uh, a little brandy, whole butter. I have a veal demi glass that I'm going to put in the sauce to give it a nice mouth feel. Um, I have shallots, uh, whole black peppercorns, my fried shoestring potatoes, and powder thyme, which I don't use to cook with, but it's a, it's a nice garnish. Um, I've got this uh, Marty Griffin's Big Red for, uh, for the sauce and cream. So what we're going to start out doing right now, I'm going to start with the sauce. Uh, basically with the sauce, I just want to get a saucepan, a little bit of vegetable oil, Start with probably about a half cup of shallots, somewhere in there. You want to add some sprigs of fresh thyme, so give it phenomenal flavor. Just throw those right in there. Also, your bay leaves. Two or three bay leaves. Then you want to throw uh, your fish product in, whether it be fish bones, fish shells, fish head, anything. It'll give it a good flavor. Full black peppercorns. So you put everything in there whole. Yeah. And you just saute that right up. You want to make sure with shallots you don't burn them because like in, like garlic, a shallot will get very bitter if you burn it. Just want to lightly saute it. Go ahead, go ahead and add your red wine. Find a dry or red works. I use this uh, red Zinfandel for this dish. Then you just want to let that cook. Then you want to let it cook to OSEC, which means it's it's dry. There's very very little liquid in the pan. Okay, while that's reducing, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my uh, my sea bass ready for preparation. Prepared. Ooh. Want to start out, put a little fresh thyme on there, both sides. And then the key to making any dish taste good, whether it be sweet or just a, a normal entree dish, salt is the key to successful cooking. And why is that? What is salt brings out the flavor of everything. I mean, you can have a... You can have something that doesn't taste really good, and then you add salt. It just it just it just gives it that kick. Any great chef will tell you that they cannot work without salt. And then a little bit of the uh, white pepper. You want to dust that in flour. Now, with this is not a fatty fish, so with this fish, you want to make sure that your pan is very hot. Pan can just be sitting there smoking hot. Now you're developing a new menu here at Bacchus, is yeah, that correct? Yeah, it's going to change uh, beginning of April. It's going to change around quite a few things that I'm, not that I'm not happy with, I just want to, you know, circulate some things that are, I, I have some new ideas that I want to try out. And, and give us an example of some of the things you plan on putting on the new menu. Uh, I'm going to do a, a citrus swordfish. It's served with uh, citrus couscous and uh, citrus salsa, and then it's served with uh, asparagus with uh, a citrus mousseline sauce, which is a uh, hollandaise with cream whipped in, wow. it's a cilantro. I'm also going to do a lamb with uh, a lamb, a lamb reduction sauce with wild mushrooms, uh, mashed potatoes, and uh, sautéed Swiss chard. I'm going to do a tuna au pois that's served rare. Um, comes with the shoestring potatoes and the sautéed sautéed uh, Swiss chard. sauce is just about ready to be strained out. So I'm going to take a real fine strainer. It's called a chinois. 
I go ahead and pour that sauce right through the chinois. Take a ladle. Push it all down, get all the flavor out of everything in there. At this point, it's ready for a little whole butter. And, of course, a little salt. You don't need to use a whole lot of white pepper just because there were black peppercorns in there. But I do like to give it that little kick. This is amazing how, let's, let's let me show this, how smooth and creamy that is. I mean, it, it makes the highway, it doesn't fill right in. That's nap hay. I'm going to come back after the butter is melted and taste the sauce. Make sure it's salted correctly and if it needs anything else. Came out fabulous. Do you like the taste? Uh, sure. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Yeah, it is really good. I'm going to check the fish right now. A lot of fish, a lot of people don't know this, but the fish. This fish is done. It can be served medium rare. Salmon's a great example of a fish that can be served medium rare, and a lot of people don't know that. Okay, at this point, I'm going to get ready for my presentation. I do need to get a spatula. You want to take your sauce, carefully ladle it around the edge of the plate. It's got a nice color, it's got a nice contrast with the plate. You want to take your Chilean sea bass. Set it right on top of those shoestring potatoes. Take your sautéed leeks. Set those right on top of that. Now for garnish, like I said, I use the, pot, the powder time for garnish. Looks real nice. You just go around the edge of the plate. And then for another little, little twist, set that right on top. And there you have Boy, that the is, Bacchus version of Chilean sea bass. That is beautiful. It really is. And it, if it smells as, as, or if it tastes as good as it smells, it's, it's uh, fabulous. I, you know, it seems like there's also a trend in, in food presentation of, of this vertical. Yeah. And where do you think it, that it, comes from? It look, I mean, it just looks nice. It's not your run of the mill stuff flat right on a plate. Um, it's just got a, it's got a nice, you know, eye appeal. Are we going to get a chance to taste this? Well, one of the real advantages of hosting the art zone is being able to taste uh, delicious uh, Chilean sea bass like this that's prepared at Bacchus by Master Chef. Tyler Redman and I'm going to do this. I don't even need a knife. The, the fish is so tender here. Mm. Oh, that's very good. Very I'm good. Glad you enjoy it. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you would uh, have us come into your kitchen like this and uh, get a chance to see you um, make such a great dish. As part of Uncommon Lives, Extraordinary Women in the Arts, the Rockford College Art Gallery exhibited the show Focused. The exhibit featured women who have succeeded in the medium of photography. Annie Noggle presented a lecture and an informal studio talk on the subject. Ms. Noggle was a pilot during World War II and midlife became a student of photography. Her first images were shot with a panoramic camera. She was exploring the use of space and how people live in it. Miss Naga likes to photograph things as they are, not cleaning up or changing the scene in any way. She also likes to allude to the past through her imagery. In one of her earliest projects, she wanted to take photographs of people. However, she wanted to do it in such a way that would not elicit a negative response. 
So she decided to shoot while lying on the ground, just their feet from a few inches away, giving a perspective that normally wouldn't be seen. Well, thanks for watching The Art Zone. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a call at 968-0123 or stop in and see us at J.R. Cortman Center for Design, 107 North Main, downtown. If you'd like to see past episodes of The Art Zone, they are available for checkout at the downtown Rockford Public Library. Once again, thanks for watching The Art Zone. We close now with credit footage from the All City Orchestra Festival, made up of local high school students. Their guest director is Mike Burt.